Hi there and welcome to our tutorial for creating a bathroom design in SketchUp. In this tutorial, we will cover using the interactive render, the camera settings like auto exposure, white balance and depth of field, using the Cosmos 3D models and material assets, customizing them, setting up light sources and using the light mix element, and finally setting up a production render final image. If you would like to follow along with this tutorial, Take a moment to download the practice scene linked in the video description below. Let's dive into it. We have a simple scene of a bathroom space and a small porch in front of it. I will start the interactive rendering to check how it looks. By default, we have a sunlight enabled, but we will manually adjust its orientation. I will adjust the vertical and direction angle a bit. I will go for a diffuse lighting with no direct sunlight in the room. We will adjust the render settings a bit. I will turn on the save frame to see the render area in the viewport and we can see interactive light cache is on by default to be able to use auto exposure and white balance. I will set the quality to low for faster render result and will turn on the denoiser. And in order to update the denoising often we will turn the update effects to rapid. Let's check how it looks. We can see the denoiser kick in right away. We can switch on the auto exposure and white balance while rendering to fix a bit our lighting and colors. And once we get their values, we can apply them to the camera by clicking the check button. It is now fine to start adding materials to our scene. This can be done quick and easy with the Cosmos library ready materials. I'll look for a nice floor first. We can choose whether it will use triplanar mapping or the geometry coordinates. Let's leave the triplanar on. We can now import it to the asset browser and apply it to the floor plate. The result is rendered immediately. I will search for a stucco material to apply to the three walls I will select. I will apply to selection. The size is correct, however we can adjust it for artistic reasons. We will need to change the size for each texture slot, like diffuse, gloss, bump in the material. Also, I will increase the bump value a bit to get rougher material. I will add a concrete shader to the outside garden wall suitable for it. Let's right click it and apply to selection. And I will search for a fancy wallpaper for the white square wall in the back. This one will do with the few adjustments. Let's first apply it to the wall. Again, I will fix the triplanar size for the different slots to get a bit larger pattern. And we can also really easy adjust the pattern colors from the diffuse texture. Now it matches the rest of our color palette better. Now that we have a bit darker and a bit warmer materials applied, we can update the exposure and white balance to match our scene better. We can use the auto values as a guide and adjust the exposure as we see fit. I think I can start adding the main bathroom furniture now. I'll use the Cosmos library to get suitable bathroom assets. Placing them is easy in the scene. I will just need to rotate them to fit perfect in their place. It is great that by merging the proxy we can easily change and customize the material to fit our design better. Let's add some more. I will fast forward arranging the other assets and accessories and their precise placement. Again, I will switch the material of the heater to one that better suits my design. And I'll add some greenery outside. We have high poly plants and tree models in the Cosmos library that we can easily add to our winter garden. 
The bathroom, we'll need some lighting and we can quickly find some suitable spotlight fixtures geometry in Cosmos. We'll place those on the ceiling, but we'll need to add actual lights for them to affect the scene. I will choose an IES file and place it properly, a bit lower than the spotlight, so it's not obstructed by geometry. Also, some hidden lighting would be great in those slots we have in the ceiling. Perfect for that are V-Ray rectangular lights. We can see them lighting the render right away. I will make an instance of the light by moving and holding the control key and will then fit it in its slot. We can add extra detail with the high poly 3D tiles and panels to the walls. Those are V-Ray proxy and we can scale and multiply them around as much as we need. Another way of adding detail is to use Enmesh. We will need a component to add it to as a base. For the pattern, we can use a ready preset from Cosmos that will apply Enmesh to the selected component with one click. We will need a proper texture coordinates for it that we can add easy with the V-Ray Tree Planner mapping button. I will adjust the tiling and height of the pattern to better fit on the wall and we are ready. Or we can remove the current pattern and use our own custom pattern. In this case, a piece of the panel I have used on the other wall. Again, some quick adjustments to the Enmesh settings and some better positioning of the panel tiles and we are ready with our porcelain walls. Now that all furniture and accessories are added, we can fine-tune our lighting and prepare different scenarios. I have added a few more auxiliary rectangular lights outside to simulate a softer sun, to bump up the environment light with portals and to add some highlights in the interesting spots. I have also added some highlights in the interior and created sphere lights for the pendant bulbs. We can see how they affect the scene when switched on. In order to have even more control over them, we can add a V-Ray light mix element that will let us adjust them in the frame buffer without having to re-render. We'll group them by instance to control them in clusters. Also, I will quickly add a cryptomat mask for the materials to let me select and adjust a material in the frame buffer if I need to. I will test some multipliers on the lights to fine-tune the lighting. It is smart to name your lights properly so you know which one you are adjusting. Once I'm happy, I can transfer those multipliers to the scene and we can see how they will be applied to the light's intensities. And the render result will match what we adjusted in the light mix. We can add some more effects and adjustments in the frame buffer like sharpen or lens effects for the spotlights and highlights. At this stage, I feel like fine-tuning some materials. I want to get a frosted glass effect on the shower screen. I will set a render region around it to have faster feedback when adjusting the material. Frosting is easily achieved by decreasing the refraction glossiness of the material. I will add some color to it as well. I will increase the reflection IOR to get a more intense reflection from the smooth side of the glass. Another advanced effect is to use the V-Ray multi subtexture on random mode for the material of a repetitive element. In our case, I want to achieve some variation on the tiles. I will wrap the diffuse in multisub and will turn it to random mode by node name. We can vary their hue and saturation as well as their gamma brightness. I will exaggerate this now to see the effect clearly. 
and then we'll calm their values down a bit to look more subtle. I will randomize them by mesh element and in this way we'll get random brightness in the small subtiles as well. I have put a nice plant in the foreground of our composition. However, a nice depth of field effect will look really nice and will add depth to the image. I will switch it on and see how it looks. I will increase the defocus to have the foreground more blurred. Also, I will make sure the focus point is around the back wall. I will easily point it in the scene and the distance will be automatically calculated. I think I'm happy with the result and I can start setting up the final render now. This is easy achieved. I will increase the quality. We can notice how the noise and subdivisions change automatically on the right panel. We can put the denoiser to V-Ray as this has better final quality for the image. I will increase the resolution to full HD and I can start the production render now. While we wait for the render, we can always play around with the frame buffer adjustments. In this case, I want to play around with the light mix multipliers to achieve a pure night scene with artificial lighting. I can save this preset as a night light mix. I will try a pure day scenario with just natural lighting and having just the hidden ceiling atmosphere lights on. I will save this as a daylight preset. We can now really easily switch between our different lighting scenarios by loading the safe presets. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you want to dive deeper into specific features, keep an eye out for our next tutorials. Thank you for being a part of the V-Ray experience.